This is a guy that even Jennifer Lawrence couldn't score with, no matter how hard she does this, this, or that. But she'll never give up seducing him. Since a few days ago, Maddie's ex-boyfriend Gary had her car towed. The court sends Gary to seize her property because she can't afford the property taxes. As an Uber driver, how could she pay her debts if she lost her car? So she tries to get Gary to let her off the hook by flirting with him. Just as Gary gets lost in her sweet nothings, a naked man who she claims is her cousin from Italy suddenly shows up. Who in their right mind would grab their cousin's breasts with both hands to display their affections in public? Frustrated by her cheating, Gary is determined to tow her car, and Maddie immediately gives up trying to win over the useless man. She knows she can't save her property by lying, so she rollerblades to steal her car back while Gary is ordering food at a store. She unfastens her car from his truck and tries to drive away. However, the extra hook up ruins her perfect plan. The loud noise she makes by slamming the gas pedal is quickly noticed by Gary. Gary mercilessly lifts the hook and calls the police, cutting off any chance for her to keep her car. It isn't long before Maddie is bailed out by a friend of hers. In order to pay off her taxes, she has to take a job during the peak tourist season in the summer. Working in a bar has become her only source of income. But as soon as she sees these rich people come in to buy drinks, her attitude towards service turns sour. After all, they're the reason her taxes have tripled since they moved to Montauk. The manager scolds her for not throwing tantrums on summer days and sends her outside the bar to fold napkins. Her friend Jim teases her about the possibility of selling her organs to redeem her house. Meanwhile, Jim's wife Sarah finds an interesting post. Two helicopter parents are looking for a kind 20-something woman to date their 19-year-old introverted son for an entire summer. And the payment would be a Buick Regal car. Maddie apparently thinks it's a better deal than having a one-night stand and not being able to pay her debts. She must win the job. After a harrowing journey up a mountain, up a hill and up a set of stairs on roller skates to apply for the job, her will becomes even stronger. But the Beckers are going to turn her down as soon as they find out she's 32. Maddie promptly emphasizes her strengths as a mature woman to guide their son into a proper manly life. Whereas the young girls lack the skills to do so. While she succeeds in getting the offer, she also learns that 19-year-old Percy is sensitive and socially inept. He hardly ever talks to people, except on the internet. Anyway, he doesn't do any of the things that stereotypical men are expected to do, including drinking, driving, and partying. His parents want him to come out of the shell as soon as possible, otherwise he'll probably be bullied when he attends Princeton in his current state. In order to prevent him from being devastated and to build up his confidence to be natural with girls, they promise to keep the deal a secret. Maddie gets right to work, putting on a seductive pink dress and arriving at the animal shelter where he volunteers. Her aggressive stride has Percy cowering in the corner with his dog. Mind if I touch your wiener? What? Your dog. She asks for his help by saying she wants to adopt a dog. So Percy introduces her to Milo, a cocaine-addicted ex-narcotics dog. Maddie throws out sexual innuendo, but he's more interested in whether she's qualified to be an adopter. To seduce him closer, Maddie drags a small couch right under his nose. No matter how seductively she flirts with him, he remains indifferent and just goes about filling out her application. The socially awkward Percy has never had to deal with such a wild woman before, and he just wants to finish the interview. In order to create more interaction with him, Maddie insists on giving him a ride home. Percy finds it hard to believe that such a sexy woman is driving an old van. Maddie throws his bike in the back of the van in case he sneaks away. After hearing her proclaim that he is her hostage and seeing her drive to a different route, Percy is in no mood at all to appreciate her kind expression, until the machete in the back of the van makes a creepy noise and Percy pulls out his cell phone to call the police. His cell phone is quickly snatched by her, which makes Percy think she's really a kidnapper, so he then sprays her eyes with mace. Maddie bursts into tears and admits that she thinks he's super hot and that's why she wants to sleep with him. Percy rushes to apologize and washes her eyes with a hose. It's apparent that he doesn't know how to help girls, other than to mess them up even more. As a token of his apology, Percy agrees to go on a real date with Maddie. The next evening, Percy walks into the bar where Maddie is staying, dressed in a suit and short pants, fearful of being tracked down by his parents. He is easily scared by the slightest movement. Maddie pushes him to drink more Long Island iced teas so he can handle alcohol and be open to new things before he goes off to college. Suddenly one of her ex-boyfriends interrupts the innocent boy's first date. He warns Percy to be careful because Maddie's so slippery. Actually, Percy, who appears to be a slut on the outside, is a very sensitive woman on the inside. Whenever she realizes that men are getting serious, she runs away. 
Maddie drunkenly takes Percy to the beach and offers to go skinny dipping with him. As a rule follower, Percy resists the challenge. She shows him how to break the rules, starting by shaking off the conventional stereotypes. Otherwise, the sissy boy would just give in to being yelled at. Get the fuck in here right now! Okay, 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 okay. Percy soon swims up to her like a dog paddling through the water. Just as Maddie wraps her arms around his neck to break his virginity, three teenagers suddenly start making trouble on the shore. The teens steal both of their clothes, cell phones, etc., and make lewd comments to make fun of them. Percy, who feels ashamed without his clothes, is about to witness the power of turning milk into bile. Maddie calmly fires the first shot of her revolt against the nasty teens, in her most natural form. As a poor, mature woman she has never believed in those stories of heroes saving the beauties. To get her belongings back, she goes several rounds of intense fighting with the teens, but her violent behavior isn't going to go over well with Percy, who was born with a silver spoon in his mouth and his eagerness to do it with him right after the battle makes it hard for him to understand. After all, the virgin can't stand the idea of making out with someone he doesn't know. Maddie gives up on the lesson in frustration and dresses for the drive. Suddenly a naked Percy jumps on the windshield of her car and yells at her to give him back his phone. How could Maddie give in to a child's threat? She takes him for a drive around the city, naked on the hood, until a police car shows up, fearing that her license will be revoked. She plans to take the risk of running a red light. Just one second before they are hit by a speeding train, they cross the railroad tracks. Maddie then brings him to her house. When she dances in front of him, he doesn't even know how to smack her butt and instead kicks her down. Maddie places him on her thighs and shakes him like a baby to sleep. Maddie then invites him to the bedroom to get some business done. Shy Percy agrees, but suddenly he feels an itch all over his body that he can't control. Maddie senses something's wrong and lifts his shirt. It turns out he often gets rashes when he's anxious. With the flames of passion quenched, the two of them take the opportunity to reveal their feelings to each other through the rubbing of cream. Percy confesses why he doesn't like to socialize. He was rumored by his classmates to have slept with his parents when he was in ninth grade because he was dependent on them. So he's never made friends since, except for his online friends and his former nanny. Maddie also talks about how she's been living in this house her whole life to take care of her sick mom because her father has family in the city. She's just the illegitimate daughter of her father who doesn't care at all. This conversation draws them closer together. Over the next few days, getting to know each other better, they start spending a lot of time together. They run and play on the beach with Milo and the other dogs on their leashes. They play laser tag and other games at the playground too. Win prizes. Maddie, who is always tough, is even childish enough to sabotage a kid's basketball shot. The two of them are kicked out of the playground as a result as her many sides are revealed to Percy. Percy trusts her more and more. He'd exchange tickets for gifts to surprise her. He even tries to trap her forever with a finger trap. Sensing the boy's seriousness, Maddie gets a little panicked until he patiently teaches her how to get rid of the finger trap. Maddie talks about how she once wrote a letter to her father who abandoned her, but all she received was an unopened letter back. It had become a haunting experience for her. Sensing her fragility, Percy finds the courage enough and kisses her. Then they go for a walk and run into Percy's former nanny, Jody. Given that his nanny is a mature male, I think we can all understand how difficult it is for Percy to reach out and bond with Maddie. But the nanny isn't as friendly as she thought he would be. What the fuck do you want? Jody's worried she's approaching Percy for his money. Of all the powerful families Jody's nursed, Percy's the nicest boy he's ever met. So he wouldn't let anyone hurt Percy. In the evening, Percy drives Maddie, all dressed up in a limo to a dinner party. He's treating it as a sort of celebration of his prom. After all he has never wanted to share sweet moments with his mean peers. He doesn't even carry his phone out of the house now so he can talk to her more. Maddie wants everyone to see how good he is. So she's going to offer him a chance to exercise his courage and express himself by playing the piano on stage. If he refuses, she'll give him one of the most awkward social evenings of his life. Under her coercion, Percy, who has always been timid, reluctantly begins to perform. The applause makes Percy realize what a great thing it is to be able to express himself. As she marvels at his talent, a girl interrupts her. Natalie is an acquaintance of his family, who also studies at 
Princeton. She invites Percy to a party later with many Princeton students, seeing the two teenagers standing together in a vibrant manner. Maddie feels jealous and declines Natalie's invitation on his behalf. However, when the sincere Percy broaches the subject of meeting her for a weekend after he goes off to college, Maddie declines, citing that she doesn't do long-distance relationships. For her it's just a summer fling. Her coldness hurts Percy deeply, so he decides to go to a party with his peers. After a few dozen days of her training, he could now finally savor the taste of drinking. Welcome to the world of adults. Percy. After watching Percy's sad exit, Maddie hesitates for a moment and then chooses to go to the party. The brilliant students, the rich kids, the passionate couples all confirm that she is not from the same world as Percy. Her straightforwardness is seen as bullying by the teens. She is mocked by the teens for being too old after all the social lessons she's learned. Her light-hearted jokes are recorded by teens as evidence of discrimination. It's not until she learns that Percy and Natalie are in the same room that she can escape being haunted by the youths. Worried that Percy is sleeping with another girl, she rudely opens door after door. Maddie is amazed that students nowadays only have intimate contact with their cell phones instead of people anymore. Finally, a locked room catches her full attention. Maddie takes off her shoes and bangs on the door with all her strength. She angrily roars at Natalie, who is lying with her young boyfriend. Natalie hurries to explain that nothing happened because Percy is unconscious from a pill he took earlier. Maddie then carries him into the restroom and sticks her finger down his throat to induce vomiting. Fortunately, his discomfort is caused by taking ibuprofen and alcohol together, not illegal drugs. The trouble is, the teenager who takes her jokes as discrimination gets his parents to throw her out. After seeing Maddie being bullied, Percy, who has always been committed to being invisible to his classmates, rebels. He fights to take down the adult male who insults Maddie, but his fist ends up hitting Maddie in the neck. Percy feels guilty as he looks at Maddie, who almost loses her breath. He says he's ready for her and takes some protection actions. Maddie then starts to show him how to open it and use it. But then he says something that suddenly makes her stop laughing. I love you. She points out that Percy is drunk and that he shouldn't be giving up his first night tonight. Percy respects her opinion and just rests his head on her lap for comfort. The next morning, Percy's parents are supportive of him volunteering to learn how to drive and give his girlfriend, Maddie, a ride around. They are happy to see him come out of his shell, but their blood pressure quickly goes through the roof when Percy decides to stay here instead of going to Princeton for Maddie. They rush to the phone to ask Maddie to convince Percy to go to college, and in exchange, they even offer to transfer a new Tesla to her this time. Unfortunately, Percy hears the call while he's sitting in the car trying to connect his Bluetooth. He then realizes that the love he's given his heart to is all about his parents' plans and a woman's greed. To get revenge, he calls his friends to remove the tire covers of the Buick that will be given to Maddie. Since she breaks his heart, he has to destroy her car. It would have been best if the revenge had ended when the car crashed into a tree. He doesn't realize that the broken branch will smash all the glass and the roof of the Buick. Back in the room, Percy decides to give her another chance to tell the truth. Her fabricated lies still disappoint him. To make him happy, Maddie takes off her clothes and lies down on the bed and agrees to make out with him. But he ends it in two seconds. After regaining his composure, Percy says he knows about her dealings with his parents. Maddie apologizes to him and explains that she only did it to save the house her mother left her. She also bluntly brings up the class issues she has with him. Percy never needs to worry about money and has no problems with it because his parents have it all set up for him. They even had a way of getting the classmate who bullied him to transfer to another school. Maddie regrets that she doesn't have a rich father to keep the house for her, but he is quick to hurt her with his harsh words. He makes it clear that she's imprisoned herself in this town because she's been waiting for her father to come back and apologize to her for abandoning her. His words really put Maddie in a state of contemplation. She finally decides to say goodbye to her terrible past. Maddie covers her broken roof and glass with plastic wrap and works as an Uber driver to make money. She takes after the kindly Percy to get to know her one night stand, only for him to disgust her with the finger trap Percy sent her. She burns the letter her father returned unopened. She sells the house she gave everything to save it to a pregnant Sarah who wants to move out because she can't afford a new house. In the days since her breakup with Percy, Maddie has been thinking about how to start a new chapter in her life. First she has to go to the boy she hurt so much and apologize. Even if she can't be a couple with him, she doesn't want to lose this friendship. Naive Percy still can't forgive her for lying to him and intends to drive away. 
So Maddie jumps on the hood the same way he stopped her from leaving. What happens next will prove to be a game changer for the timid, introverted Percy. He slams on the gas and watches as she struggles to survive on the windshield to express his anger and frustration. Until he hits the grill and sets Maddie on fire. And the angel in him returns. He runs into the ocean and saves Maddie and forgives her. You're still a virgin, not Chad. No, that counts actually. After learning that Maddie was selling her most precious house and planning to move to California, Percy has the courage to embrace the college life and new social life. That used to mean torture for him. His parents also learned to respect his will and let him face his future successes and failures on his own. Percy leaves his parents, who have been in control of his life for 19 years, behind and sets off to college to make new friends. Meanwhile, Maddie has adopted Milo, a drug-addicted drug-sniffing dog. Next she'll drive the boy who changed her life to his new destination, Princeton, before heading to California with Milo to follow her dreams in the sunshine and the breeze. No Hard Feelings is a romantic comedy featuring two very different characters, of different ages and genders. Maddie and Percy may not seem to be from the same world, but in fact they are both victims of the family they came from. Parents who want to control their child's life almost make the introverted Percy huddle in his shell. Afraid of stepping into the complicated society, Maddie is emotionally traumatized by her father, who abandoned his illegitimate daughter after an affair, and is afraid to make a real connection with others. As summer comes to an end, fall reminds us to say goodbye to the past. The introverted boy who goes to Princeton to follow his dreams will never forget. The sister who saved him when he was 19 years old and taught him to grow into a man. The 32-year-old and ear well woman will always remember the boy who restored her courage and changed her life for the better. This is Maroon Recap. Let's watch a movie together and experience something different. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.